Yo, what is going on guys? My name is Russ and today I'm bringing you the first of a two-part series for Subtlety Rogue in the patch 9.1.5 Sanctum Domination patch. Um, today we're going to be focusing on raiding uh, with Subtlety and uh, the next video will be a Mythic Plus version. The goal of these videos will be not only to give you the information that you need to play Subtlety correctly, but also why you're going to be pressing those buttons so that you understand how the class fundamentally works what I think a lot of guides do is just spew information at you. And while it is most of the time correct, sometimes it doesn't equip you to actually make your own decisions uh, and therefore maybe recover from a tricky situation. So we'll jump into the video in just a second. But before that, I thought I would just mention that I do have a live stream. I stream over on twitch.tv forward slash just Russ. If you have any questions or want to catch me live or just hang out with my community, then uh, feel free to check that out. So without further ado, let's jump into the video. So starting off with the talents, we're going to be jumping in with the level 15 row. Uh, and for this one, there is only really one choice. It is Weapon Master. Shadow Strike and Backstab have 15% chance to hit the target twice each time they deal damage. It basically does exactly what it says on the tin. Just a bit extra damage now and then. It can be a bit unpredictable with um, combo points um, because the extra hits don't only do extra damage, but they also give you the extra combo points, which uh, can lead to kind of potential overcapping. We'll cover that later in the rotation part of the guide as well. Moving on to level 25 row now. Uh, in this one, there is absolutely only one option, and it is Shadow Focus. Abilities cost 20% less energy, while Stealth or Shadow Dance is active. So it's less about the Stealth part of this one, um, and more about the Shadow Dance. We're going to spend a lot of our time in Shadow Dance, especially because later on, as you can see, we're going to be taking the Enveloping Shadows talent, which means that we're going to have more Shadow Dances, so more time in Shadow Dance. Um, with our energy costs being cheaper is obviously a really great thing. So no competition there. Um, moving on to level 30 row, we're going to be using deeper stratagem for subtlety. It just gives us an extra one combo point buffer um, because it is kind of easy to lose track of your combo points a little bit, especially with the passive called shadow techniques. It can make it quite easy to um, overcap a combo point if you don't run deeper strat. So not only is it going to be giving us that one, one extra combo point buffer, but also our um, finishes are going to be hitting 5% harder as well. So that's always good. On to level 35 row. Um, there is really only one really, really good option, and that is Cheat Death. I can't count the amount of times that this has saved my life. It essentially does allow you to just get away when you should have died. If you don't want to be being called out by a raid leader or in a pug or whatever, then I would definitely stick to Cheat Death. Now in the level 40 row, um, it doesn't really matter what you take. Prey on the weak, I guess, is probably the only one I could say is maybe useful in a raid environment here. As I mentioned earlier, in the level 45 row, we are going to be running Enveloping Shadows. That not only gives us an extra charge of Shadow Dance, but it is also reducing our cooldown of Shadow Dance by an additional 0.5% per combo point spent. So not only do we have more Shadow Dances, um, you know, cap-wise, but we also get it back quicker because every combo point we're spending is an extra 0.5% um off the uh cooldown of shadow dance right and in the level 50 row we're going to be running master of shadows for the most part you can spec into shuriken tornado for a little bit of kind of like ad cheese on a couple of the fights in this tier like fate scribe for example with the big uh sets of small ads that come but for the most part and the safe option is to take master of shadows which again just gain 25 energy over three seconds every time you enter stealth or shadow dance right so basically every time we shadow dance which as i've said is quite often um, that is going to mean we're just getting extra energy, which is just going to smoothen out the rotation. You will definitely feel the difference. Um, if you ever play with anything but Master of Shadows, you will definitely feel the difference. Um, it just feels a little bit less clunky inside of Shadow Dance. So that's always good. Now your Soulbinds and Conduits are largely going to depend on which Covenant you play, obviously. Um, so I will put on the screen for you now the choice of Conduits that we're probably going to be running. Um, it will be two or three of these five conduits on the screen now. Clashing Scars, if you're Venthyr, that's the top priority. And then you've got to choose between Deeper Daggers, Perforated Veins, Deletto Staccato, and Planned Execution. And I'll put on screen for you now a kind of cheat sheet that I did get from the Rogue Discord, and it shows you which Soulbinds and Conduits you should be using in combination with one another. So no matter which Covenant that you are currently playing, um, which is interchangeable, you should be able to pull off um, a conduit combination. In general, you're always going to be running Lashing Scars if you're playing Venthyr. And then the next best ones are basically Deeper Daggers, Perforated Veins, and Stiletto Staccato. Planned Execution is kind of one that a 
fell off a little bit as we got more gear, but it could still find some uses, maybe even in Mythic Plus or something. But Lashing Scars are just going to be making your flagellation even stronger for Venthyr. Uh, Deeper Daggers is just shadow damage, so that's um, all of your extra damage through fine weakness. Perforated Veins is just going to be making your backstabs a little bit stronger, especially uh, the backstabs between every shadow dance. So there's a little bit of nuance to it. And Stellato Staccato is just going to passively reduce the cooldown of your Shadow Blades, which again will stack up with Deeper Daggers because that's shadow damage. I've also put on screen for you now the Sims between all of the different um, Soulbinds with each of the Covenants. In general, you're probably going to want to play Venthyr or Kyrian if you're going for optimal damage output, in which case Mechanicos for Kyrian and Theater for Venthyr. Now with all these new systems in place, there is a little bit to talk about regarding gearing. So we'll start with the easy stuff, which is the stat priority, of course. Um, you're generally wanting to go for eye level, um, but if you can focus on any particular secondary stats, you're gonna be wanting to focus on crit and verse. They're both really, really good. Now, haste and mastery by no means bad stats, but um, they do fall a little bit behind. If you want to make absolutely sure, I would recommend that you use the website called Raidbots to sim your character and see what's best in your gear. Now we do have to talk about legendaries as well. Um, as I said a little bit earlier in the video, uh, for optimal damage output, you're probably going to want to be running Venthyr or Kyrian. Now if you do run Venthyr, which a lot of people are right now, um, you're going to want to run the Obedience Legendary in all content actually. Um, and what that's going to do for you is not only uh, kind of buff your flagellation, it's going to also give you versatility um, by 0.5% per stack, but it's also going to reduce its cooldown by one second for every combo point that you do spend during it. So however high you get the stacks on flagellation is also going to lower the cooldown by that many seconds. So 25 stacks, 25 seconds, you're going to want to aim for 25 or higher stacks each flagellation. Um, and or th if you hit the 30 stacks, then that's 30 seconds off. So ideally that's going to get it down to a one minute cooldown which will then sync up with every other symbols, right? Likewise, if you're running Kyrian, then you're going to want to use the Kyrian legendary called Resounding Clarity. And what this is going to do for you is every time that you use your Echoing Reprimand, instead of Anima Charging one random combo point, it's now going to Anima Charge four combo points. Um, and this won't be random if you're running Deeper Stratagem, it will just be combo point two, three, four, and five. Um, so you'll get, you'll get the 45 seconds, I think it is time to pop all four of those. Um, which I guess puts a little bit less pressure on you to um, pop it, you know, with the whole Shadow Techniques minigame that you have to play with subtlety. Um, and you'll probably just pop it quite passively over that time. Now, if you're running any of the other two coven covenants, I would probably recommend that you run Akari's Soul Fragment for full single target. But even then, that's a bit of a push. So I'd probably just run Finality um, because it's generally got more uses. Now for your Domination Sockets, ideally you have all five slots which means that you're going to run uh, the DPS gem from each of the schools. So the DPS Frost one, the DPS Blood one, the DPS Shadow one, and then two others to make up whichever set bonus you want. And for subtlety, you're going to want to run Blood. So your final loadout should be the Shard of Core, the Shard of Ds, the Shard of Deck, and then uh, the two other Blood ones. Now there are a lot of moving parts to the subtlety rotation, but it does become simpler um, once you get your head around it. It's not as hard as it first seems. Um, it can be broken down and I will break it down for you now into three simple sections. And that is basically buff up time, uh, resource management and burst windows. Now just to quickly touch on buff up time, obviously we have our two, I guess we can call them buffs. We have rupture, which is a debuff on the target and we have Slice and Dice, which is a buff up on ourselves. We want to keep those up at all times, and that's pretty simply done. We just uh, make a couple weak cores for it, or however you track buffs or debuffs and stuff like that. Regarding resource management, we want to be uh, saving our energy if we can for Shadow Dances. Um, so making sure that we go into each Shadow Dance with like 70 or more energy preferred. And then with our combo points, we want to be spending on five or six. As a bit of nuance to this, um, because of a thing called Shadow Techniques, which I'll put on the screen for you now, but I will talk about it in depth a bit more in a moment. Um, and the last uh, section that I'll touch on is obviously Burst Windows. Now, this is probably the, the key to subtlety and where you'll probably notice the, the biggest difference between a, 
a average and a good subtlety rogue um and that is utilization of symbols of death which is one of our kind of big cooldowns or it's a small cooldown but it's up fairly regularly and what symbols of death is doing is every time we use it we're going to be doing 15 percent more damage so obviously we want to be pairing this with a shadow dance because that is the window that we're doing the most damage in and there are two reasons why you'll find the biggest difference between as i said a good or an average rogue um, inside of the shadow dance window and that is um always making sure that you actually have a shadow dance ready for every single symbols it requires a bit of patience um, a lot of people new to subtlety will just spam shadow dance away on cooldown because they think in their head um, and i was guilty of this as well back in the day when i started up um why would i not be in shadow dance when i could be in shadow dance because i do more damage in shadow dance right wrong um well true but you want to be because of that you want to be making sure that you always have one ready for symbols of death you never want to be caught kind of with your pants down where you either pop symbols on cooldown and you don't have a shadow dance to go with it or you have to sit and wait with symbols off cooldown for your shadow dance to come back up and then use it because in you know you're either delaying putting your symbols on cooldown which is bad or you're not having an optimal symbols of death window so an easy way to manage this is just to keep looking at your shadow dance charges and uh, obviously always pop one with the symbols but a way to manage make sure that you always have one ready for symbols is uh, only use a kind of like a spare shadow dance um, when you're getting close to capping out two charges which is exactly why we take the enveloping shadows talent so that we have this second charge um, which means that we can kind of keep one in the bank so that we always have one ready for a symbols now the second difference I see between a good and an average rogue is maximizing the amount of eviscerates that you do fit inside of your symbols of death window. So we're obviously going to be wanting to be in the shadow dance every single symbols um, and that is going to give us a lot of combo points and we want to be ideally doing two shadow strikes and an eviscerate between every single eviscerate I guess right. What a lot of people will do especially again once they're new to it is they won't really plan ahead too far in advance and they'll just be like you know they'll do it correctly they'll be like oh symbols is coming up i've got my shadow dance ready and then they realize halfway through that shadow dance and symbols window that they didn't refresh their rupture or their slice and dice is about to run out um so they'll use one of those finishers inside of the symbols windows to refresh a rupture or a slice and dice um and obviously because symbols is kind of like giving us 15 percent more damage um we want to be putting in as many hard hitting abilities into that window right so we ideally want to be using every single finisher inside that window as an eviscerate. Um, so what you want to do is plan ahead, try it if you can, and uh, it just won't always work out, but if you can plan ahead um, to do it more often than not, you want to be making sure before your symbols comes up. So always check kind of when your symbols is on about 10 seconds left on, you know, on cooldown, comes up every 30 seconds. You want to be looking over at your buffs and debuffs and being like okay will i have my slice and dice going for this next symbols um or not like if i didn't refresh it now so then you can make that choice if you need to refresh one of them a bit earlier than you usually would outside of the pandemic window or something um so that you won't be having to use that global cooldown and those combo points inside your symbols when that could be going towards like an empowered eviscerate right so that's the gist of it keeping up the buffs planning ahead with your resources um and also your buffs and just making sure that you aren't caught in a symbols window without a shadow dance charge at the same time as not capping shadow dances i know it sounds kind of hard to do it's like this metronome you can't have too little or too many right but um you'll feel it out over time and you will get better at that i promise you that now regarding stuff like vanish um just throw it away on cooldown outside of a shadow dance you don't want to be using a vanish shadow strike inside of a shadow dance because you can already do that right so just um, pop it whenever um, outside of a shadow dance. Um, usually in the opener, that will be um, between your first and second shadow dance of your opener. And the same with Shadow Blades, your big three minute cooldown. You probably just want to bang it um, with the symbols um, and make sure that you kind of bank close to two shadow dance charges for that as well. Now, if you're playing Venthyr, um, you're just going to want to use your flagellation in sync with every other symbols because you're going to try and get your flagellation down to a one minute cooldown and it is okay to delay symbols of death by up to 10 seconds if you're going to be able to use it with a flagellation now we just want to take a moment to talk about shadow techniques which is a passive 
Um, the tooltip is quite vague. It just says your auto attacks have a chance to generate one combo point and a energy. Um, but how it actually works, I'll put it on screen for you now. The gist of it is every three auto attacks, you will have a chance, a 50% chance to gain a combo point on your next auto attack. And if it doesn't proc on that one, it will 100% proc on the next. So you can kind of count on it proccing maybe like every two to three seconds. So just factor that in. And uh, that can usually be used to kind of get you up to the sixth combo point uh, for your finisher. I don't pay too much attention to it inside of Shadow Dance. But outside of it, you can kind of slow down the spec a bit to um, allow for this to just kind of like pop you up to the top um, of your combo point bar before you use a finisher, right? So I just want to finish off by talking about the opener a bit. Um, I'll cycle through the different openers which will be used for different covenants. So just pause the video on the covenant that you are if you want to see your specific opener. Um, the way that they look is just because some things are maybe macro together um, or used at the same time. So if you can hopefully understand the timeline that I've made for you. Um, but in general, you want to be opening from stealth, obviously. Um, on zero, you want a shadow strike, immediately slice and dice. And then depending on your covenant, you'll probably pop some kind of shadow blades macro, a rupture, and then you jump into your shadow dances with your two shadow strikes eviscerate, two shadow strikes eviscerate, two shadow strikes eviscerate. After your first shadow dance, you generally want to vanish, do one extra shadow strike, and then pop your second shadow dance. And then after you're kind of out of charges, you just go into your maintenance rotation, refresh your buffs as they come, and make sure that you're always keeping an eye on your symbols of death so that you can um, pair it with the shadow dance and use, use it for big damage. So yeah, that's about it, guys. That should be everything that you need to successfully pop off inside of the raid. Um, I will be making a Mythic Plus video for this in the very near future, um, which is obviously kind of a flavor rogue Mythic Plus spec at the moment as well. So feel free to check out my other videos. Feel free to, again, head on over to the Twitch live stream. Make sure that you like the video. Um, that would really, really help me out with the algorithm on YouTube and things. Um, and yeah, check out this video over here because apparently you'll like it.